We're currently in the second half of uh, this topic that was sort of introduced with quadratics and we talked about parabola and then we introduced this weird funky um, idea that was related to a parabola, sounded like an insect. Do you remember? So, <laughs> I always call this locus. I equally hear it pronounced locus, but I think that sounds too much like, um, like the crazy grasshoppers, so I, I say locus so you don't confuse it. Um, this is just another way of thinking about the geometry of a parabola. And we had a look and we saw there were other shapes you could also express with it. Okay? Now, we're going to continue digging even deeper further into parabolas and quadratics. And this is the mechanism, this is the tool we're going to use to do it. Parametrics is the name of the topic that deals with, you want to write this down, uh, that deals with parameters. What's a parameter? Uh, it will be easier for me to explain what a parameter is with a, an example before I give you a definition. So here's my example, uh, and this is what you're going to put on this graph down here. Suppose, suppose, you wanted to graph two quantities against each other in different countries. You wanted to graph obesity rates against numbers of TVs in households. Okay. What would this graph look like? What would this graph look like? As the number of TVs in a household on average increases in a country, right? You've got some countries that have no TVs at all, and then you've got some countries where it's like, we have six TVs per household because everyone needs to have two screens to look at at the same time. Uh, what do you think would happen to the obesity rates? And I think we could all predict, it might look, I mean, I'm grossly oversimplifying, but whatever. It might look something like this, right? Uh, you, there are countries with no TVs and they have very low obesity rates, apparently zero. Um, and then there are countries that as you get more and more TVs in the house, you get more and more incidences of obesity. Now, I say this is a gross oversimplification, but it is in fact what happens basically in reality. Now, the question then becomes, well, what do you make of this? What pattern do you see? What conclusion do you draw? What conclusion could you draw from this? I mean, I've, I've drawn it as a linear thing. It could, it could have been like, you know, a curve like this or a curve like that, but they're all going to be increasing. What conclusion would you draw? Okay, so you look and you see, I think there's a, um, there's a connection between these two, clearly. Correlation, when you see two things um, going, going up together or, or, or falling together, doesn't mean that one causes the other. In fact, that's kind of the main point here, that I would suggest... There's a, there's a third variable going on that's underneath here that you can't see. It's not on my graph, because my graph only has two axes. There's a third variable that leads to both of these. And I guess, you know, again, oversimplifying, you could call it something like uh, a country's economic prosperity, maybe? you got more prosperity, people buy more TVs, because they've got more disposable income. And when you have more economic prosperity, people have large amounts of food, they've got unhealthier food, and so obesity rates go up, okay? So this idea here of somewhere hiding in here, financial prosperity, it's this other measurement. It's this other measurement that's kind of hidden there, or, or it's off to one side. And in fact, that is exactly what parameter means. Parameter, like when you have a metric of some kind, um, a metric is when you measure something, okay? So this is a measurement or a value. Para literally means off to one side. So uh, you know how there are paramedics, right? Paramedics are people who work alongside all the other medical professionals. Um, you know you have a parabola, right? A parabola is the shape when you throw something off to one side, right? We'll explore that in Project on Motion later next year. Uh, anytime you see the word para, like paralegal, okay? It's just when you've got something and something else over on the side. A parameter is a measurement or a value that's off to one side or hidden, right? You can't see it here. And so the first reason why we talk about parameters, why we introduce them, is for the sake of clarity. We want to clarify what is really going on in this situation. Is there some kind of value that is really driving what's going on that actually makes this happen and makes this happen because neither of these are directly related to each other. They're all related to this parameter. Okay? There's another reason, which is convenience. Because this idea of a parameter 
you actually have already encountered it, we just didn't tell you that it was a parameter. On your next Cartesian plane here, can you draw for me the unit circle? Now, the unit circle is a very important shape. We've been dealing with it for a while, which is why as soon as I say unit circle, you know what this shape is. It's a circle with the center at zero, zero, the origin. And what else do you know about the unit circle? It has a radius of one, hence the unit circle, right? So you've got one, one, negative one, and negative one. This is the unit circle. Why do we care about the unit circle? Does anyone remember, and I don't expect the answer is yes, but it might be yes. Does anyone remember why we introduced the unit circle in the first place? Which topic did we introduce it in? You guys are great. We introduced it in trig. Why did we do it in trig? Because there are right angled triangles hiding everywhere in the unit circle, right? Once you recognize there's right angled triangles hiding everywhere, they all have a hypotenuse of one because it's the unit circle. And from this we can infer what? What did we say about the coordinates of any point on the circumference? Anyone remember? When you think about this right angle triangle, in terms of trig, we could say that the x coordinate of a point on the circumference is cos theta. Does anyone remember this? Okay, we were trying to redefine sine and cos. We were trying to get outside of right angle triangles and get angles that were like bigger than 90, like obtuse angles or, or um, reflex angles down here. Okay, we said that the x coordinate was cos and the y coordinate was sine. Now I want you to look carefully at those coordinates. Do you see that I could say x and y, right, two, two values, but really there's a third value, one off to the side that's hidden, which is really driving both of them. Do you see that? So theta is the real thing that's going on. It makes x happen, it makes y happen. And here's, here's where theta is. We defined it as the angle between, what is it the angle between? It's the angle between the positive x-axis and the radius up to wherever your point is. Okay? So if I put my, uh, my point over here and the radius would go this way, I'd measure my angle all the way around. Something we're very familiar with now. Okay? So again, just re-emphasizing, this guy here, theta, right? it's the parameter and the reason why having it is convenient is because now I can describe any point on the circumference of this circle and instead of supplying two values, an x and a y, I can just supply you with one, with the parameter. Does that make sense? Like I can say um, 189 degrees and everyone can tell me where that is. I told you one number and you were able to locate where that was, I guess it would be somewhere around here. Okay, so you don't need two, you only need one, that's clearly more convenient. Okay, 